a subsidiary of First Quantum Minerals Limited. to this week's edition of Costa. Thank you so much for making time to be with us this evening. UN experts have called on the Zambian government to immediately stop actions that infringe on fundamental freedoms. In a press statement issued on the 29th of August 2024, the experts raised concerns over multiple allegations of arbitrary arrests, detentions and restrictions on gatherings, particularly targeting opposition leaders, parliamentarians, human rights defenders, and activists. Independent experts expressed concern about multiple allegations of arbitrary arrests and detentions on charges of inter alia and lawful assembly, espionage, hate speech, and seditious practices against opposition political party leaders and members of parliament, inclusive of parliamentarians, human rights defenders, and activists, as well as restrictions on gatherings, meetings, peaceful protests, and rallies. In Zambia. Meanwhile, Information and Media Minister and Chief Government Spokesperson has denied the findings of this report, stating that it failed to reflect the realities on the ground. Honorable Cornelius Mweto says the administration in Zambia is committed to protecting freedoms and upholding the rule of law. My name is Andrew Mwansa, sitting in for Costa. Mwansa, my guest tonight is the United Quacha Alliance Chairperson, State Council Sakwiva Skota. We discuss Zambia's state of democracy, but also we look at some of the findings in the report that the UN recently released. Thank you so much, State Council Sakwiva Skota, for joining me on Costa this evening. Good evening. Thank you for inviting me over. Let's begin off with um, your reaction as the United Quacha Alliance of um, uh, this UN report, government stating that the report does not reflect the realities on the ground. What is your reaction? Um, well, what I'd like to point out is that what is contained in the UN report is the exact same things that uh, we have been saying as UCA, that other opposition parties have been saying, what the Law Association of Zambia has been saying, what the um, people like Oasis uh, Forum have been saying, and clearly um, it is not that it is something new. It is something which is a fact, which is bothering every Zambian, and it is gla gladly, um, it has come out from the UN. Because uh, when we make those same allegations, they say things like, ah, those are just bitter people. Or they say, no, it's because he wasn't given um, a position in government. I don't think they can say that the UN is bitter. I don't think they can say that the UN uh, people who wrote those wanted jobs from, uh, from the UPND. So clearly, what they have to do is squarely address the issues which have been raised and not try to deflect or gas light the issues, no. Mm. That is um, something which shows that they are guilty and they've got no proper way of justifying or defending what they have been doing. The UPND is shocked through the chief government spokesperson. Uh, he's highlighted a number of things that he's shocked by. One of the things that he's shocked by is the fact that the report indicates that this administration has been arresting the clergy, which according to him is, 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 is very shocking because this administration does not remember when they arrested the clergy. He must have a very, very short memory. Right now, we do have Apostle Pule, who is um, facing criminal charges. They kept him in the cells for a week 
of somebody who is well known or fixed up board, but they just didn't want to release him. They wanted to punish him. They kept him for a week. He is a clergy. They have been raiding churches when churches are, are ongoing, so long as they see that there's somebody they don't like in the church, they have physically gone and raided church services. They have sent out call-outs for priests, several of them. So it would appear that uh, Cornelius Muetua has mm -hmm. got a very short memory, or conveniently he is just wanting to look away from the facts which are on the ground, which everybody can see. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, he makes his case weaker and weaker because everybody can know and everybody has seen that they have done so. Mm. The, the, the minister also speaks out on arbitrary arrests and, and he questions the report you know, on this basis because according to him, there's nobody who's, you know, who, ha who has been in detention without formally being arrested. And, and, and he argues that perhaps he questions the source of the person who has been given this, 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 some of these you know, uh, reports to the, to the UN. There is a lot of arbitrary arrests. Right now, um, you've got three young men who have been in detention since Tuesday. What are those three young men supposed to have done? One of them was outside the Freedom, uh, by the Freedom Statue, doing a lone protest, a lone protest. He was armed, armed with a vinyl poster. Just a vinyl poster setting out what he was protesting against. That vinyl poster he had didn't even, you know, with some of them, uh, to hold them up, you've got sticks, you know, which you may say, oh, maybe that stick, he could have been using it to get violent. He didn't even have those sticks. He was holding it. How dangerous is that person that you have to keep him in the cells since Tuesday? How can you say that there was an illegal assembly? He's alone. And you proudly as minister say that there haven't been arbitrary arrests, arresting that young man doing a lone protest is an arbitrary arrest. I'm, I fail to understand why he cannot see that. Mm. The report also indicates, you know, State Council that the government has stifled, you know, the, the rights of people to freely, especially the opposition political parties, to freely hold rallies, but they need to catch our lands to its partners, uh, Citizens First, has so far, if my memory could serve me right, have held so far two, you know, massive rallies. A recent one was just held about a week ago. Yes. Um, you know what is uh, very frustrating? Um, in order to sort of like make people say, no, 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 they're not doing that, every once in a little while, they will not stand in the way of somebody's right. Every once in a little while, when were we supposed to have had that rally? We were supposed to have had it more than a month ago. They stopped us. Yeah. And we kept on pushing. And then so to sort of like ease the pressure a little bit, they say, okay, let them go ahead with this one. But then again, they'll clamp. We'll not be able to hold another one probably for the next three months or so. That is not the, what you can say you're allowing people. You're not. Hmm. But also, you know, the government has expressed concern that this report also does not highlight the, you know, the progress made by the new Dawn administration, you know, particularly in, in, in getting rid of draconian laws, uh, uh, such as, uh, you know, the, the laws on the defamation of the president, the, the death penalty, but also, you know, the implementation of the access, you know, to information. So is this report does not indicate some of the progress being made towards enhancing our democracy. You don't agree that um, perhaps 
this administration, you know, is on the right track in terms of enhancing our democracy? No, it isn't. This um, administration is very good at PR and uh, making a, a, a presentation that looks good. But when you actually look at what they're doing, there's nothing. Um, with the issue of the death uh, penalty, um, when was the last person ever executed in Zambia? The last time was during uh, the, the Frederick Chiluba administration. Since then, there hasn't been. But the law was in existence. The law was in existence, but it was not uh, being carried out. The law is still in existence, by the way. The supreme law, which is the constitution, still has it. So it's still in existence. Mm. <laughs> yes, on the uh, lower law, at, at the penal code level, it's been taken out. But it is still there in the constitution, which is the greater law. So that answers your question of the law uh, <laughs> uh, was there. Mm. It, yes, even now the law is still there. The constitution still has it. So. Uh, doing that was to just look good. President Lungud didn't sign any execution orders. President Sata didn't. President uh, uh, Rupia Banda didn't. President Monawasa didn't. But he is going there and proudly making it seem like he has changed things. We haven't been having people executed here. The death penalty has not been there. And then you turn to things like, uh, for example, uh, access to information. It has not been put into operation. They still do not give you information. There's lots of um, issues that, for example, President Sean Tembo has formally asked to get information on, and it hasn't been given. Well, the, position, so, the position of government is that we, they're still working on mechanisms for its operationalization. Otherwise, yes. the law is there now. No, if the law is not in operation, it's as good as not being there. And even all these uh, praises and so on given, you don't praise somebody for not having operationalized it. But it's a process. Then you wait before you praise them. Let them operationalize, then you praise them. But shouldn't we praise them, State Council, no, no. that this, this particular why piece of has it, why has been it, for why has it take, Why has it taken them so long to operationalize it? Where are the problems? Why can't they tell us what the problems are? It is because all they wanted to do was to gaslight. Gaslighting is, you know, creating an impression, but in effect not doing anything. So that they go out there and say, look, we've got access to information, but it's not operationalized. So what's the point? You cannot go and praise somebody for merely some desire but not actually doing it. Shouldn't we praise them for the desire to do so and the, that de the first step to That actually... desire, in fact, is not a true desire. It's mm -hmm. gaslighting, like I said. They just want to give an impression that they want to do that. If they really had a true desire, it would be in operation right now. The defamation of the president law, which has been dealt out, d dealt out with? The defamation of the president law has been taken away. But instead, what they do is they then uh, do sedition and so on for those cases where they would have done that. So to look good, they've said defamation of the president is not there. But then they're arresting all kinds of people for saying things. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you've mentioned a number of reports here that you know, have clearly indicated that the democratic space is shrinking. You've mentioned the report by the Church Mother Bodies, Oasis Forum, the Law Association of Zambia, and, you know, and Chapter One Foundation. But also, th there's another report that you're not, you know, uh, making reference to, State Council, the Vidim um, Institute report, one of the leading authority on democracy, uh, on democracy worldwide, which place, you know, which places Zambia near the top of the list of countries that have made significant democratic, you know, advancements. Why are you not making in reference also, you know, to, to this report that uh, and does acknowledge some of the strides that we've made so far in enhancing our democracy. Let me make a correction first of all. You said one of the leading. It is not one of the leading. 
um, in terms of democracy. The leading ones are people like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International. Those are the leading ones. And what have those ones said? The true leading ones. They have all condemned what is happening here. With VDEM, and it's a very young organization, it's only, this is now, it's going into its eighth year now. It has only got five researchers at its head. And it has only got something like um, uh, 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 30 people who work for VDEM. It keeps secret who the founders are. And you and have been able to investigate amongst some of the biggest funders are the Brent Hurst Foundation. Do those ones ring a bell to you? The Brent Hurst Foundation is one of the lead uh, funders of VDEM. Brent Hurst Foundation uses those kinds of organizations to uh, give certain impressions about uh, the people they favor. As you very well know, Brentest and the UPND are in bed together. So, <laughs> and, 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 and also... I know you want no, no, to discredit... No, no, I don't want to discredit it. I don't want to mm. discredit it. I want to let people know uh, and correct the impression that you've given. When you are describing them, you're saying uh, they're leading. It is not. Very far from it. And it is not transparent in terms of even who the researchers are who give it information. They keep that secret. They do not disclose. The other thing is that um, what they look at principally is in terms of elections and how the elections are done. Democracy is more than just the elections and the process of the elections. That is one of the other major failings of VDEM. So let us look at those who truly are recognized well, the, uh, to be elections. The, the leaders mm. and what they say, as, uh, as opposed to this young organization which is secretly funded by people who are in bed with the UPND and uh, re then realize that, well, what they're saying does not hold as much weight as what uh, Human Rights Watch say, for example. You cannot compare the two. You cannot. <laughs> hmm. Let's talk about some of the issues that they talk about in, you know, in, in the VDM report. You know, they, they argue that um, cases of political violence in, in by-elections have drastically reduced compared to how we were in the last regime. Um, I think that if you ask, uh, for example, Socialist Party, um, they had one of, um, in one of the elections, their candidate actually even had to go into hiding because of the amount of violence and threats which were there. Um, if you look at uh, the Mandevu rally that we wanted to hold, mm. very frightening, frightening scenes were there, frightening. You cannot say that that is uh, something that we should say, ah, oh, this is good, Zambia is good. If you look at um, various uh, things that these cadres, UPND cadres are doing, uh, the threats that they make on, um, on others, one even going as far as saying that uh, bring um, uh, President ECL here will, will castrate him. Well, how, 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 how can you say that? Mm. The level of violence has gone down. If people can even state things like that and their superiors uh, see nothing wrong with it, do not even chastise those people or anything like that. It, it also argues that the freedoms for people to speak now have been enhanced compared to... <laughs> That's why there's so many people uh, facing all these hate crime charges, facing these sedition charges. Where That's why a young man, J uh, Jason Mwanza, holding up a, a placard in a soul, whatever, to, to say something is locked up since Tuesday. Please, let's be serious. You cannot say that people are allowed to talk when such things are happening. Mm. From your lenses, Ted Council, do you think things have worsened in terms of upholding our democracy as, as things were bad, you know, in, in the last regime? 
things have worsened. They have worsened. They've become much, much uh, more worse. Um, you have a situation where, when, when we saw in the last regime people being be, being technically killed in in, in by elections, you know, people being shot because uh, the police want to disperse. You know, I remember the time that. Uh, 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 President Haka in the was at four set quarters and you know two people were shot dead all in the name of wanting to disperse the people that came to accompany uh, you know, uh, an opposition political party leader. Are such things happening in this regime? Well, what has happened even during that time is you had the UPND being extremely violent. Um, you had Gumbo in uh, in uh, uh, Solwezi, who was killed by the UPND. These are people who, who did not even have the state machinery, but were able to specifically go out there to go and kill. Now, with uh, the people who were killed um, at that, uh, the, the, the two who were killed, it's most unfortunate. I actually uh, knew uh, one of them, the prosecutor, somebody I interacted with and everything and worked with. Very, very sad. But that was not an order coming from the politicians. The police uh, felt that they needed to control the situation. It wasn't that they were told by uh, the president or whatever to say, go out there and shoot uh, those people. It is an unfortunate thing, yes, but uh, it wasn't that it was planned that way. Whereas now, you have when President Akainde goes over to Mungu for the um, Kumboka ceremony. At the airport, the minister, Honorable Milupi, challenging his cadres to say, why don't you sort out the opposition? The Swaniso, the youth chair, had the same thing, also saying, yes, we're going to be sorting them out. Mwaliteta mm. doing that. That shows you that it is actually, the, the issue of violence is being fanned and encouraged by the very top. And the president was there, by the way, listening and nodding. He didn't say, no, 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 honorable Milupi, this is not the Zambia we want. Or this one is, no, no, no. He did it. He was actually nodding. Oh, we've seen him condemn, you know, uh, violence. And actually, if there's one thing that he, he likes to say, is that say that's the key word. Say that uh, <laughs> if, if 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 you find yourself on the other side of the law, you're on your own. In fact, there's some of these cadres that commit crime. But they don't commit it in the name of the president or the UPND. They commit it in their own individual capacity. I like what you said. He he says. But when you look at what he does, it's something else. He says, do not uh, do things of that sort. We have in Mpika, he captured on video, that UPND feature taking a panga out of a bag. Mm. Everybody can see. His face is very clear for everybody to see. Definitely the UPND uh, officials there in Mpika know him, yet nothing has been done to him. It, 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 there is no doubt that if they truly wanted to stop those kind of things, that person right now would be in the cells. So the police are still investigating. What's taking them so long? Why can't they in, uh, uh, show who it is? With um, JJ Banda, they've said that they want to give 20, is it 20 million or 2 million? 2 million. Uh, 2 million uh, kwacha. kwacha reward over an issue which they say involves 200 kwacha. Here you have somebody taking out a panga wanting to uh, kill an opposition leader. They can't even give a 100,000 uh, reward for people to get to him. It shows you that there is no desire by them to deal with that. Mm. Would it be fair, really, to apportion blame 
on the president. I ask like this, um, State Council, because even in the previous administration, President Edgar Lungu had put his foot down on ensuring that cadres, you know, are, are dealt with if they find themselves on the other side of the law. But they continuously, you know, did the opposite of what the president was saying. Would it be fair, really, to say the responsibility then should be on President Haka in Islima for not controlling or putting, you know, those cadres to sit? The back stops with the president. Whether it's President Kaunda's time, whether it's President Luga's time, whether it's President Mwanawasa's time, whether it's President Banda's time, President Sata's, President Lungu's, the back stops with the president. Right now, we are in President Hakainde's time. The back stops with President Hakainde. Mm -hmm. He cannot and should not and should never ever say, because it happened in Kaunda's time, because it happened in Lungu's time, because it, he should never say that. What we should always be doing is what is right. In spite of what may have happened in whichever regime, that is not the standard by which we should go. It should be what is right. Mm -hmm. And what is right is that when you have people like that one who took out the machete, President Hakainde should call uh, his leaders from there to say, hey, who is that person? Tell me, find it out me. I need to get him out of my party. I don't want people like that. And the police need to deal with them. Well, that, that is the mm -hmm. only thing we should do. We should never say, ah, but it was no. That is something we should never do. Do, do, do you think the, the, the police are acting and professional in terms of curtailing, you know, crime, li li you know, like that? I certainly do, and I think that we've got the wrong Inspector General of Police, somebody who has gone out and made ludicrous statements, like saying that uh, he would never allow uh, rallies to be held. Um, you cannot have somebody in charge of uh, the, the, the policing of this country making, uh, let me use very moderate language, making ludicrous statements like that. And, and uh, by, by saying ludicrous, I'm being very, very, very moderate. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I, I should be using a much harsher term than that. Than that. Speaking about, you know, r being ridiculous and being, um, uh, and, 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 and not carrying the state of being a former head of state, you, you, you saw the statement by the minister responsible for internal security and home affairs on Jack Mwimbu describing the sentiments that President ECO said to be unresponsible, not befitting, you know, a, for a former head of state. When you warned um, civil servants that when he comes into power in 2026, he's going to sort some of the, some of them that are acting and professional, and you personally sort them out. And the question is that look, that is irresponsible. How do you sort out a civil servant without using the law, but using the law within yourself? Um, I don't think that uh, he said that he would be. Uh, doing that uh, himself personally. I think that uh, what he was saying is that if you as a policeman or as a civil servant uh, go and do something which is against the law, then he will ensure that you are sorted out. If you do something which is outside the law. If you're following the law, you've got no problems. There's no need for you to worry about anything. I think the problem that government has is that it should be the law that should sort out people because they do follow you in your homes. We follow you in your homes? The police, yes, because it's the government. He was speaking when he says we, it means government, not uh, himself personally. So the government, yes, would follow them in, into their homes. Well, it doesn't seem like that's how the interpretation from government, you know, uh, sat like. It, well, you, you see that um, even the way that Cornelius Moetua has reacted to the UN report, uh, they, they like to, to swivel things around and give them a different uh, viewpoint. That is not what he was saying. If that is what the impression they had, let me make it very clear and correct. He meant that if you as a civil servant or as a policeman do something which is against the law,
then the government will follow up on that. Mm. The, the, so I hope that that, that, sets that, the, the I hope that sets that straight. Mm. <laughs> Perhaps even it's, it seems like the government is only is not the only ones that uh, you know misunderstood the president, the former president, even the the, the president of the civil the civil servants uh, uh, says that um, uh, let's ensure that the, the president Edgar Lungu doesn't come back into power to sort out people and, and, and he was aging the civil servants to ensure that they show him who has the real power you know on the ballot in 2026 by not voting him in um, and I think that uh, that's why it's important that even uh, state media gives opposition people um, the right to be heard and to to appear there um, the state media and so on has gone full out to give an impression of uh, what was said without giving an opportunity for clarity to come from President uh, Lungu. And once he does give that clarity, then I'm sure even uh, the union leader will realize that, oh, okay, if what was being said is that those who go against the law um, will be facing consequences from government. I don't think that uh, the union leader will say, no, 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 those who go against the law, let mm. them be. He would not be saying that. Do, do, but do you think they deliberately dis Yes, deliberately, they do. You know. Do you know one thing that this government has been, I can give them an A plus for. In fact, the only thing I can give them an A plus for is in terms of public relations, in terms of painting a rosy picture, in terms of telling lies, distorting the truth, give them an A+. Plus Others have argued, State Council, that the biggest problem of President Edgar Lungu is his mouth. Uh, because even even the last time that he spoke at, um, at Dunamis Church, um, when, 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 he, when, when he said something and government stated that the president, the former president, is planning a regime change. Um, I am planning a regime. I am planning. I am, I am planning a regime change as well. I think that they should, we should change the regime. There's nothing wrong with planning regime change. President Akainde, uh, prior to 2021, was planning regime change. He was even calling for early elections. There are videos of him doing that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with with saying that. Are you calling for an early election? Yes. Well, the, the, the is there anything wrong with that? You tell me. Well, there there isn't. Council. I agree with President Hakainde. President Hakainde said if a government is failing, then we should have early elections. That is a quote of President Hakainde when he was in opposition. And I agree with what he said. And suddenly what he said then cannot be wrong today. <laughs> it was right for him to say it then. It's right for us to say it today. Mm. The, the argument then that uh, the, this, the BPND advance is that it's, it's a bit irresponsible for the former head of state because he's a former head of state. He's not an opposition political party leader like yourself, like how HH was you know, a few years back. You were speaking as opposition, but if you've been through office, you've been a president, you must be, be, you must be very careful with what you say, because what you say carries much more weight. We must all be careful with what we say. Whether we are in um, office or whether we are aspiring to go into office, we must all be very careful with what we say. And we must also ensure that whatever we say is something that we will stand by even after we go into uh, office. Otherwise, we are nothing but liars. If you're saying that I can say something when I'm outside, <laughs> but once I get in, I, I can then turn around and abandon that, then you're saying you're encouraging politicians to be liars. That is not good for the country. Three years down, the, the UPND clocked three years just last month into office. Obviously, they came into office with the campaign promise of change, fixing the economy, ensuring that they combat corruption. I'd like to find out your thoughts on the fight against corruption three years down the line. And before I get to that, you, you mentioned two things, fixing the economy. Um, even with that, they failed. 
um, ask the average person uh, whether they are able to afford the things that they were affording before UPND came into power, whether their diets are the same or worse or better since UPND came into power. I think that um, if you go around very clearly, people will tell you that no, they've those, never had it as bad as this. Those that were employed, yes, would say that. Uh, not to, not only employed, those. Most of them have been employed. They've employed uh, thousands of, of, of civil servants. <laughs> and so at least they would say uh, our, our living conditions have improved because if we're unemployed and the current economic conditions are the same, they would probably suffer. But some are in employment, and you know the ripple effect of employing over 70,000 people. You know why I'm laughing? Um, the UPND like to pat themselves on the back saying, look, we, in 2022, uh, we employed, is it uh, uh, 20,000 uh, nurses and 30,000 teachers? And uh, maybe I've mixed up mm -hmm. the figures. But anyway, that we employed in 2022, by the way. We're two years away from there. In between, you've not been hearing of these grand, big uh, employment figures, have you? No, <laughs> there hasn't been. Apart from that, when you look at, uh, I think generally the total figure then came up to something like 8,000 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the teachers and the nurses and the policemen, let's say 100,000, mm -hmm. for argument's sake, 100,000. Um, do you know how many people drop out of the school system um, at the uh, 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 grade uh, seven level? Do you know how many drop out uh, at, uh, at uh, the first exams now are, I think, grade... Uh, yeah, seven, nine, and 12. Seven, nine, and 12. Grade nine? How many at grade 12 fail? The figures go into hundreds of thousands each mm. year, hundreds of thousands. Now, if you're then patting yourself on the back that, ah, we employed, like I said, I've bumped it up to 100,000, the figure. Look at how many are coming into the um, uh, labor market and how many of them you are absorbing into work. Then you realize that, no, you should not be patting yourselves on the back. There's a lot more that needs to be done. A lot, lot more. Mm. The fight against corruption? The fight against corruption is very, very, very sad. You have apparently several ministers who are being investigated for corruption. Several, not just one or two, several. That comes from ACC itself. Mm. And those ministers are still holding their positions in government. What does the law state? They're still holding their positions in government. Only one of them who was uh, um, um, allegations were made against has been transferred from uh, where they were. Now, the others are therefore able, as being the top person in the ministry, to interfere with investigations, to interfere with uh, evidence, destroy evidence, hide evidence, because they're right at the top of it. Everywhere in the world, even in the corporate uh, field where it's alleged uh, the president comes from, when somebody is facing allegations or is being investigated, they are put on leave pending investigations. That is standard practice. The presumption, the presumption of innocence until proven The presumption of innocence is still there, but pending that they are put on suspension. Being put on suspension pending investigations doesn't mean that you've been found guilty. It means that um, it, the, the, the police and those who are investigating are being given a chance to be able to investigate without you influencing the investigation, without you being able to uh, destroy evidence or anything like that, without you, uh, because you are there, Let's say I'm your boss in the ministry and I'm being investigated and uh, they come to say they want to ask you about me and then I'll call you, eh, come here. 
these people have come, they want to you to tell them about me. I'll, I'll be waiting to hear what you say. <laughs> you're going to see them. <laughs> You said you get the point. It's, it's, the point. <laughs> but it's, it's three years, like I said earlier on. Um, the UPND said they've done tremendously well uh, in terms of the governance system of this country. They count some of the things that they've done. Uh, they brought about free education. They've increased CDF to millions of cultures that each constituency is benefiting you know, from, um, among the ma many other things that they say, look, we've done very well. In fact, their economic strategy you know, hinges on them, first of all, dealing with the fabric of the economy by, um, you know, they went to the IMF and they managed to, you know, to, to, get, to get a very good deal in terms of, you know, of debt restructuring. And they say that's a precursor, you know, for economic development. May I come, may I come in because you're, you're bringing in so many that uh, we may not, because you've already brought three. Mm. Yes, we'll get to the, to the, to the other ones. Um, th th let's talk about the, uh, the very good deal. Uh, with uh, the IMF, I'm using your words, a very good deal. Have you ever seen what the deal is? No, you haven't. No one has. Correct me if I'm wrong. Have you, have you ever seen what the deal is? They have kept it to themselves. Correct me if I'm wrong. Have you ever seen the deal? No one has. We don't know what they've agreed. So we cannot be saying a very good the deal. The bailout package, you're not aware of the bailout package? No, you cannot say a very good deal. You don't know what the conditions they've set are. They've kept that to themselves. There's no transparency. They're just telling you that it's a good deal. But do you agree with their economic strategy to deal, first of all, with the date? and then begin to restructure the, the economy. The debt certainly has to be dealt with, but it's not just that you uh, deal with the debt by kicking it down the road. That's what they've been doing, kick the can down the road. It's, it's not uh, the same like um, uh, with uh, the Levy Mwanawasa debt cancellation. Mm. With him it was cancellation. <laughs> the debt was totally done away with. Here, all you're saying is that, okay, don't, you don't need to start paying it tomorrow. Uh, you start next month. Okay, the time is not that short, but I'm just using that as an illustration. That mm -hmm. not, tomorrow you don't have to pay, but next month you'll have to pay. So you just kicked it down the road. W is, is it a good deal? As we get back to um, what I was saying, that what are the other conditions that they've put? Some of them, uh, even though they haven't announced, are things like um, these Zesco hikes that you are seeing. There are many others. I'm using that just as one of the examples. There are so many things that are tied to it that we haven't seen. If, that if, if you've listened going to the to argument of President Haka in this, I say that. This is, we took the plan to the IMF of how we intend to grow the economy. And so the conditionalities, in fact, it says that the IMF of the 1990s, not the IMF of now, the conditionalities that, you know, the, the conditionalities that people think they've set out for us, we are the ones that have agreed with them that, look, this is how we want to grow, and may you help us. Um, and so it's, it's ourselves as a country that have gone to the IMF and, and that I've, I've given them our plan. And not them giving us their plan. Very good, very good. Now, tell us the Zambians <laughs> what your plans are. You go and tell the foreigners, but those whom you say you're planning for, you don't tell them what you've told those people. That's what I'm saying, that it should not be something which is like, um, like some cult, some religious secret cult who keep secrets. That should be made very clear. Would you have that there this is the plan. Kind of office? Would no, you have no, let, me, there? let me finish. That this is the plan that we have taken to the IMF. They have a duty to do that, but they're not doing it. Why are they not doing that? Would you have gone to the IMF to help you deal with this debt challenge if you are, if, if, if you are in government today as UCA? Well, 
I think that we would have looked at various options. One of the options is to ensure that we do not give away uh, freebies to big multinationals, uh, give them tax holidays. Um, that we do not write off uh, a billion dollars uh, that they owe to the government through taxes, that we do not write that off. If those things were brought in, um, even our negotiations with the people that we got debts with would become easier because we would be able to do a lot more by ourselves without having to go there. That is the way we have looked at it. It's a holistic thing. It's not just one one key is going to open up everything. Just IMF, mm. World Bank is going to open up everything. No. You have to look at it's the whole package mm. and that is what we would have done. We would have looked at the whole package. Uh, part of what they campaigned on was not to do business in court. The UPND, you've seen that uh, the copy bot now seems to be back to life. Mopani, Cassium, you know, uh, fully operational. Isn't this something that... Uh, fully operational, you sure? Fully operational, yes, Mopani. Uh, Mopani is more operational than Cassium. Cassium, so the handover to Vedanta was, you know, was done, and this projection of, uh, you know, uh, thousands of metric tons of copper, you know, that are going to be produce but aren't you happy state council that now life seems to be to have gotten back on the copper but especially by the re resumption of these two large mines Mopan and KCM. Uh, firstly let's talk about KCM. Uh, with KCM you're talking of um, data who are very good at promises very very good at promises. Before all this had happened um, when they were getting um, the, the mine. I'm not talking about after the liquidation process, mm. I'm talking before. Quite a, they made all kinds of uh, promises about what kind of uh, investments they were going to bring into uh, the country, about uh, the social um, uh, uh, things they would do for the, uh, for the general community. Made all kinds of pledges. They didn't do them. They made pledges with regards to cleaning up uh, the, the environment in terms of what they They didn't do that. Right now... Because the, the, the government argues that the environment was conducive at, at that time. The reason why they committed to doing things that they didn't do them is because they found the environment uh, which the UPND government calls criminal environment was conducive for uh, Vedanta to have done what he did. For Vedanta not to have kept his promises. Hmm. No, no, no. If you have somebody who will not keep their promises, then it's a, you, they cannot turn around and say, we haven't kept them because these guys allow us to do, not keep them. No. It means that they are crooked. <laughs> it's in the point. Because the system allows them to be crooked. No, 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 no. If, for example, you come to work and uh, somebody has left 500,000 kwacha here, and there's no guard by the door. The system has allowed you because there's no guard there. Are you going to take that 500,000? Are you going to take it? But if I know that... Are you going to take the 500,000? that is going to happen to me if I take Are it you from, going to take the 500,000? If I know that there's nothing that is going to happen to me... You'll take it. If, they, if I know that there's nothing that is going to happen to me... Then you'll take it. Then you're a crook. <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> you, cannot, you cannot justify doing a wrong because you know that nothing will happen to you. So that should not be something that can be put up to the defense of a data to say they did not carry out their promises because they knew that the government which was there would not do anything. That is not a proper excuse. That, that then disqualifies them from ever doing business in Zambia. It's not Vedanta, it's you know, it's there are countries that are saying that. There are countries where you have uh, uh, newspapers being sold. Um, there's no newspaper boy there or whatever. There's just a pile of newspapers and there is a box where you put the money. money. Mm. And people will go and put whatever the cost of the newspaper is in there and take one newspaper. They will not go there and look around that nobody is seeing and take a newspaper. We need to get a country and a mindset of that sort.
<laughs> that's what we need. Not to say, ah, if they're not going to whatever, then I can get away with this. That is wrong. Chances are that the thousands of people that are watching us tonight, State Council, are watching this interview through their phone because they've been lot shaded now effective this day for 17 good hours. Others have, have, have gone for even 48 hours without seeing, you know, power. The challenge has been posed that let these opposition political party leaders provide solutions of what they could do best to mitigate the challenge of lot shedding. What must we do in our state council? What we must do is, firstly, um, when we are given an offer, which is good. We should uh, not play politics um, and uh, turn down because it comes from a certain country. Uh, the Russians actually offered Zambia that they would be able to supply us from uh, one of their... Um, uh, they've got these ships which actually uh, generate power and they supply. Um, and they said that they'd put it off the coast of Mozambique and supply Zambia. But because we wanted to look like good boys to the Americans, it was turned down because it's coming from Russia. Sierra Leone right now is having that done. Their the, the problems of power are being sorted out. So that is one of the things that we would do. The other thing that we would do we'll, is... So we'll be buying power from... From, from Russia through the cost of Mozambique. Yes, and the, the other good thing was it was even much cheaper than uh, what we are getting it for. And um, they were willing to give us terms in terms of repayment. So our, it has an effect in terms of our economy. Right now, a lot of industries are not able to be efficient because of this 17 hours. Uh, and sometimes it's not even 17 hours. <laughs> sometimes it goes into days mm. of no, no power, actual days of no power. Um, it, it, it creates an economic mess. You need a steady supply of power. The damage being done to the economy it is uh, frightening. That is why another thing we would have done is um, those uh, power that we were supplying to other countries, uh, the government said that, oh, no, because we had entered into the agreements, uh, so we are still supplying them even though us we don't have. There is what is called force measure. That the, the levels of um, the, 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 the generation uh, capacity going down was an act of God in terms of uh, the, the, the water levels going down and so forth. So it would have just simply been, sorry guys, uh, force majeure, we cannot supply you with that. And we supply our own people. That is, that is what we would do. It would be Zambia first. We would ensure that um, if you're talking of wanting to uh, increase by, was it 160 uh, percent, the Zesco rates, I think 160 or something mm -hmm. like that, isn't it? 160 percent, which they have done, by the way, without telling people. Well, the energy, the energy if you would say that they rejected, they rejected. Yes, they rejected, mm -hmm. but um, when you're putting in your tokens, uh, look at how many units you are getting and compare with what you were getting four months ago when you put in the same amount of tokens. They've actually uh, erased without you being told. What they wanted to do with this uh, application to ERB was to formalize what they have actually done. You know? mm. so, there's so much... Um, <sighs> You know, fraudulence being uh, perpetrated by this government, it's amazing. It's amazing. You've condemned what you describe as continued looting of public resources through, you know, constant judgments, State Council, um, that, has been, that have been entered between the UPND leaders, cadres, and the Attorney General's office. Are you able to specifically, you know, uh, highlight to us, you know, some of these constant judgments that you seem to be concerned about? 
Uh, all of them, without exception, 100% of them, all have to do with UPND cadres. 100% of them. Does it justify the, the fact that they, they are the only ones who are getting these consent judgments? Because they are being mistreated one. on the patriotic front. There are people being mistreated right now. Jason Mwanza, that young man, the Gen Z people who were arrested. You know, right now today I'm in black. It's not Black Friday, but I thought to myself, from Friday until I can see a light at the end of the tunnel, I should give support to, to those young men. They are being mistreated. You cannot tell me that they're not being mistreated. A young man just holds up a vinyl, and it's only about this size, and you lock him up since Tuesday. Let's not just say that there is nothing going wrong. Everything is going wrong. I, I asked you to give me examples of the constant judgments that you've... I've, I've told you. All of them, 100% of them, they are all cutters. All of them have not actually had an actual hearing in court as to whether or not, in fact, uh, the state should be liable. Frank Talley was pointed a gun at the Minister of Transport. Do you know how many people on a daily basis have guns pointed at them by the police? They tell you, hold, and you suppose so to stop. Aren't you? No, no. How many people have that happening on a daily basis? Hundreds. So are we going to all give them, is it 400,000 kwacha? Why is he so special? He's not the only person who's had a gun pointed at him. Hundreds. Ah. Apart from that, yes, let's say the gun was pointed at him. Let's say it was wrong for, for the gun to have been pointed at him, for him to be been told, hold, stop there, stop advancing. Um, where do you get that 400,000 figure from? I'm a lawyer, mm. <laughs> and I know what kind of damages are the average damages which are given. Ask any lawyer, when they heard that, their jaws dropped to the floor. But it's not all of, all of them that government has awarded. Patrick no, no, no. Chaleta is, is one let, of them. Let, let's, let's, let's take it step by step. Mm. Mm. Because they're saying, what's wrong with that? Yeah. That amount, never, ever, ever in the history of our laws has that kind of amount for that kind of action been given. What should have happened is, if, if in the first place uh, it was right to give compensation, I, I still have issues as to whether it was right, but let's assume it was right. The amount should have been subject to evaluation, to state to uh, Tayali, okay, what is the reason we should give you 400,000? Which other case has that kind of amount been given? so that it is standardized. Mm -hmm. Not that it is just uh, over a cup of coffee, the attorney general or the solicitor general with the lawyers for Tayali, over a cup of coffee, decide on a figure which they cannot say. They gave him 450,000. 450,000, um, which they, they, they cannot say that, oh, uh, uh, two years ago, Sakura Scott uh, was thing, and he was given 500, so 450 is all right. Or he was given 400, but because of inflation, it's come to 450. There's never been anything close to that, so you cannot justify it. And what makes it look bad is that if it was done over a cup of coffee, I, I don't know whether it was over a cup of coffee, but let's say it was done over a cup of coffee, these are the same set of people who before 2021 were having cups of coffee together. <laughs> you know, they were representing these same people when they were 
uh, when Tahali was uh, in, in opposition, those were the lawyers for the UPND and so on. Doesn't that start to make you feel, is this right? Especially when you see that there is there's obvious special treatment. Mm. Other people who have had guns pointed at them do not have that. Let's go back to the Gen Z people. They so should we be worried, really? We should with be. With our judiciary. Because the, 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 I'll come to that as mm. well. You've got a very good point. It's, it's what I wanted to come to after that mm. regarding these concerns. It's a very valid uh, observation. The Gen Z people who have been uh, locked up, they have not been taken to court. They have been denied police bond. Surely they are entitled to compensation. Compensation at the level which was given to uh, those who were with uh, President Akainde in the cells. Those ones, you remember the first consent order we had. At that same rate per day, those young boys should be given that. Because you cannot be said with just what they had written. Have you seen what was written on it? There is nothing criminal about that. Being alone holding that up and to have your liberty taken away since Tuesday. Definitely. Would you, you, need, would you, you would, need compensation? Would we look at but this consent judgment? Will, but, they will, form government. but they will not give a consent judgment to those young men. Would because they, they were not having coffee with them before they came into power. The second aspect is the one you were touching on in terms of the judiciary, in terms of these consent uh, judgments. When uh, a consent judgment is filed into court, hmm. it's not automatic that the judge must sign. In fact, the judge has a duty to see whether it meets with uh, uh, social norms and uh, it's, it's not against uh, public interest for that consent judgment to be endorsed. Part of what they should be looking at, the judges, is to say, okay, so much for this. Call the parties say, I see you've agreed on so much as compensation. Can you justify to me why this figure? What are the other cases, precedents, which will say that this is the correct figure? Mm. And if they cannot justify that by showing, no, in such and such a year, the case of so-and-so, this is what was awarded, and so on, the judge should say, I'm not signing this. If you want to enter into consent, I only sign if it doesn't go beyond this, which I've seen is the standard. That is a duty the judges have. They are letting us down by just simply signing off on these these things. You mean that the judges don't look through some of these documents? If they looked through them, they would not be signing them at that at that level. Because those same judges, if I go before them with a civil case which is not by consent and I ask for those kind of amounts for a similar kind of thing, they'll be asking me, no, 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 how do you justify this? No, no, this case said this, we cannot give you that. That is what they'll do. In the United States, uh, Hunter Biden, uh, President Biden's son, entered into a consent uh, with regards to his uh, prosecution and so on. Uh, the judge then looked at what was brought by the prosecution and himself, the defense, and said, no, 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 this doesn't actually meet with the sons. I cannot sign this. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Hunter Biden had to go for, for trial and has actually been found guilty. Uh, so control, that is the yeah. kind of thing that our judges should also be doing. Would, would, would you just really signing, look, would, but would, looking to say, Will you really look at, right? at some of these constant judgments when you form government? Yes. Yes, I mean that's that's uh, the so people's money. To return. That is the people's money. That is the people's money. So there's a possibility that some of some of these people are going to return the money that they've gotten. Yes. As we conclude, said Council, um, Chairperson of the United Culture Alliance, and you've been trying to register the political party called UCA. What is the status of the registration? 
Um, well, right now, we've uh, gotten past uh, the many, many hurdles that have been in the way. Uh, the second last hurdle which is there now is uh, that the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, has to give his recommendation that uh, registration of the United Kwacha Alliance uh, can be made. Mm. Um, you've uh, heard him uh, make statements which are anti-United Kwacha Alliance, you know, in uh, at other times. So we hope that uh, that is not what is going to affect him in terms of uh, giving that recommendation. I think that the law actually Does it have is to do with personal feelings or it's... It's, it's, very, it's very subjective and not objective, um, the, the, the issue of the recommendation. It's very subjective. We should not be leaving it to the whims of an individual. So right now, we are at the mercy of, of, the, secretary. of the permanent secretary. Mm. So we will hear what uh, he'll say. I'll be uh, this coming week going to find out, say, have you now done the recommendation can you give us uh, a recommendation uh, uh, under what circumstances you know can the ps not recommend for the political party to go ahead and it's very this? subjective that's what that's why i was saying that it's it's something so that should not be there there's 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 no legal backing that you know the, there's no objective standard for example to say um have they got 10 people yes check Mm. Are those ten people, people um, of sound, you know, sound mind, mm. check. Um, you know what I mean? I'm just using those to yeah. say there isn't an objective list that he they get to use. That they're going to use. On, on the 29th, this last week, we met to discuss the, the selection of uh, the, uh, the United Kwacha Alliance presidential candidate for 2026. Some Zambians would like to know, really, you know, a state council. Where, where, where have you reached? Others have called on that you announced as early as yesterday, the president of the alliance. What is taking you time? No, I, I, I do fully understand the uh, anxiety and uh, enthusiasm of the general people to, to know, because uh, UCA has really captured people's imagination. Um, but um, we have to uh, do the selection process in a manner which is uh, transparent, which is uh, open, and uh, which uh, everybody is going to be comfortable with, which will leave every single person who may have interest in uh, being the standard bearer feeling that, well, the process was a fair process, a good process, and uh, the decision made, we're going to move with it. Um, so right now what we had on the 29th was um, a committee, subcommittee of the main committee uh, setting out uh, proposals as to how the actual selection process will be done. Uh, there is going to be a meeting of now the larger group uh, to either endorse the recommendations that we've put forward or amend them or throw them out completely and tell us a uh, waste of time, guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you, you know, will be considered in terms of the selection of this uh, flag bearer? Um, will you look at, the, for example, the number of the, the following that that particular candidate has? Is this going to be a huge the, factor? The, the main factor that uh, we're going to be looking at is, um, is this person uh, going to uh, be able to deliver to the Zambian people uh, that which is needed, which is basically a change for the better. Is this person uh, somebody who will be able to hold together all the constituent members of UCA? Is this person somebody who wants in that position um, is not going to have um, an attitude that uh, they know it all, that uh, only what they want carries the day. Mm. It has to be somebody who will be willing to also listen to uh, their colleagues and um, take into account uh, different views different from what they hold. Basically, it will have to be somebody who's a unifier, somebody 
who uh, is able to hold people together. So that is the main criteria. Mm -hmm. There will be other criteria, of course. How are you receiving the pressure that, of, that, of, that that will be some the that are already criteria. calling that you need to announce President Edgar Lungu as flag bearer of the alliance? How are you receiving the pressure? Um, it's not pressure. That is an opinion. Everybody is entitled to an opinion. And uh, we welcome people to give their opinions. And uh, um, definitely opinions of uh, various people will also be taken into account. Mm -hmm. State Council, Sakiwa Skota, uh, United Kwacha Lands Chapter. So thank you so much for making time to speak to the Zambians tonight on Costa. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Whenever you want, I'm available. We've been discussing the United Nations report that has urged Zambia to halt infringements on fundamental freedoms. My guest has been State Council Sakiwa Skota, who is the United Kwacha Lands chairperson on behalf of the entire production crew. Thank you so much for watching. See you again on Sunday at exactly 21.15. was brought to you by FQM Trident Limited, a subsidiary of First Quantum Minerals Limited.